Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Uh, this is Tamari once again, bringing you guys another tutorial video. Uh, this time I want to talk about corner kiting. And this is something I've heard referred to as corner juking as well. You might know about it as that name. But basically, this is a stall tactic that allows you to buy yourself extra time during the game. And I plan to show you how to do that in this video. But before I start, I just wanted to mention that I did actually write a Steam guide about this already. I'll have that linked in the description. I just figured that it would be good to also make a video form of this though as well, because I know some people prefer to watch it that way instead. And uh, Steam guides can get a bit long-winded, so yeah, I just figured it'd be helpful for some people to have a video. But anyway, um, without further ado, let me just go ahead and spawn a Scrake here. And I'd rather just show it to you and then talk about it after the fact. So while I'm doing this, I want you to see if you can figure out what's going on here. Let's uh, move to a different position here. Let's try... Maybe we can get one on the phone booth here. Yep. That was a good one. How about right here? Oh. Okay, he got really confused there. That was another good one. And let's see if we can get one more good one in. Yes. Alright, so... Let's go ahead and kill this scrape here. Oh, I ran out of ammo. There we go. Okay, so... Um, if you haven't figured it out already... The corner kiting, quote, quote, that I was referring to was when the scrape was getting stuck here as I was moving around the truck. And you might be wondering what's actually going on there. So I'm actually going to spare you guys all of the technical details because there actually is quite a bit of technicality going on here with the AI that makes this possible. And if you want to know more about that, I would suggest checking out the Steam Guide that I told you about earlier. It is in the description once again. Uh, I give a complete uh, technical explanation as to like what's going on under the hood there. But all you really need to know about this is the fact that when a Scrake, or any Zed actually, is actively attacking you, meaning they're doing an animation like that, uh, they'll perfectly track you here. So you can see clearly here that as I try to move around the Scrake, he just perfectly follows me. There's nothing I can do. Even if I'm circle strafing him, he perfectly follows me. And what we're doing here is we're abusing the fact that when that Zed is committing to that attack, he, he can't do anything but follow you. So if I can position myself in such a way where, say, the Zed is here, and I'm right here, he's just going to draw a direct line to me like this, right? But notice how there's now an object in the way. So what I'm doing is I'm cleverly positioning myself such that there's an object between me and the Zed, and... You know, if I look at this from this point of view, if I'm the Scrake and I'm standing here and I want to go after me, which is right there, I'm just going to keep running into this truck and I'm going to get stuck on it. And that's going to allow me, you know, over here, I'm going to have more time to back up and gain some distance. So this is why I mentioned earlier that it's a stall tactic. Um, it's generally useful for just buying time. And so talking about uses, uh, let's talk about a couple specific scenarios where this is useful. Number one I can think of is when you're low health. Uh, say you're kiting a Scrake or any Zed, and you're at critical condition, but you don't have your syringe ready, you could use this to buy yourself time for your syringe to recharge and then heal yourself. Uh, you could also do it when you need to reload. You could do it while you're waiting for teammates to catch up. Perhaps you're really far ahead or something, or they're behind you, whatever, and you just need your teammates to regroup with you. You could use this to stall for time. And uh, yeah, it's just, again, it's a stall tactic. Um, it's also just good during a kite, right? If you're you're the last man standing or something like that and you just need to avoid damage altogether you can do this to avoid getting hit and that extra hit you avoided could have made all the difference so those are some scenarios where this is extremely useful and it's very useful at a high level as well um i don't really see very many people do it except for me but i have seen it and uh, there, this has saved more games than i can count honestly um but anyway those are scenarios where it's useful but let's also talk about scenarios where it's not so useful and the very first one that i'd like to bring up is teammates you should never ever ever do this when there are teammates nearby you it's probably a no-brainer why but i'll state it anyway just like i did in the flesh pound juking video if you're nearby teammates when you try to execute this strategy you will probably get your teammates killed and that is because when you go around the corner from a zed they will attempt to find a new target and say there's a scrake here and say there's a teammate there. If I go around this corner, that Scrake is now going to go to that teammate. And if that teammate doesn't know about it, or they don't see it, or maybe they're already dealing with something else, you probably just got that teammate killed, and they're not going to be very happy with you about that. So don't do this near teammates uh, if you can avoid it. 
And the second case where you'd want to avoid doing this as well is when you're not uh, in relative isolation. So, you know, of course I was showing you guys with the Scrake, but keep in mind that I was all alone with the Scrake at that time. Had there been any other Zeds in the area, and one of them walked into my path as I was trying to execute this, I would have gotten body blocked, and I probably would have died for it. So you generally want to be careful about doing this whenever there's other Zeds around. You have to be very mindful of your environment. So this is a, a big exercise in situational awareness and movement tech, right? Uh, the only caveat I could say about that, that isn't, you know, where you don't have to really worry about it too much, is when you're actually kiting forwards through a map. This is really only relevant when you're looping around a specific object, right? If you're kiting forward through the map, then all you really need to do is just make sure that the path up ahead of you is clear. And, uh, you know, maybe you might need to kill a Zed or two to make sure you can actually pull it off. Um, before I move on to practicing, I did really quickly want to show you a little side uh, usage of this. I didn't include this in the other list of uses because it isn't necessarily corner cutting, but it's abusing the same exploit that corner cutting uses. And I want you to watch what happens with this Scrake here when I... I'm going to rage him and then I'm going to walk around this uh, pillar here. So there's a there was a good example of a, a kite right there. You saw the Scrake actually just ran right into the pillar and tried to hit me. Because he's only concerned with running directly at my face while he's doing this and all I have to do is move around an object. But what I'm really trying to point out here is the fact that the Scrake is just freaking out. He just seems to be like going the complete wrong directions, right? He's not even he's not even like he just did a 180 straight up right there. And the reason why this is happening is because if we reverse the roles again and put myself right there. And I'm the Scrake, right? I am trying to figure out which side of the pillar I need to go to to get to me. It's either going to be left or right. And because I keep dancing back and forth, the Scrake is basically trying to figure out whether or not he needs to go left or right. And the result is him just doing 180s and going bonkers. So, again, this is not necessarily corner kiting in the sense of what I showed you earlier, but this is an application of the same exploit that causes us to get very confused when dealing with small objects like these pillars here. And uh, there are lots of places in the official maps and even in custom maps where you can do things like that. Uh, you can even do it with these trees at times. So it turns what would otherwise be a general dead zone, you know, where there's really like nothing to use here to get away from Zeds into actually more of a jungle gym. You just need to know the right tactics, right? But yeah, uh, I hope that that uh, is, is useful to you guys. So anyway, back to corner cutting though, I did really just quickly want to discuss some tactics for practicing this before we end this video. And uh, my first suggestion for practicing is to try it as different perks. Uh, right now, if you look at the bottom left, I am playing support, and I do have a full weight capacity. I've got 20 out of 20 kilograms, which means that I am moving at these, well, not the slowest, but I'm moving a lot slower than usual. And I purposely chose this perk for this video because I wanted to show you guys that it's completely viable as a slower perk. In fact, I would even argue that it's, it's actually better for the slower perks because those perks already have trouble avoiding damage as it is, right? So this just lets you buy yourself valuable time and avoid avoid damage uh, that you otherwise shouldn't have taken. But for practicing, you know, maybe try starting as a fast perk. Try doing Gunslinger or uh, Berserker, Field Medic, Survivalist. Those are some of the fastest perks in the game. Try getting used to doing this with those perks and then gradually work your way down where eventually you're doing, you know, support with uh, full capacity. And you can also mess around with your health as well, right? You do move slower the lower health you are. So you could try doing this at low HP. You could try doing with low HP and high weight, or even, you know, any of the above, just in a combination. So uh, that's really all I could suggest for practicing. Just, you, you have to keep doing it to get better at it. You're, you're watching someone who's been doing this for thousands upon thousands of hours. So for me, it's just second nature. I could do this in my sleep, but you know, when you're learning this, you just need to do it a lot to get better at it. So uh, anyway, that's all I really have to say. I don't really have anything else to add. Um, if you have any questions for me about anything, uh, whether it be this or other tactics, just feel free to leave a comment below. You can also reach me on Discord, um, on my Discord server. I run a KF2 community. Uh, you can find it at discord.gg slash Tamari. We're mainly focused on high level gameplay. Uh, we like to teach people how to play control difficulty. But we generally just like playing the game, and we run modded servers that have a lot of quality of life mods, uh, some of which have actually made it into the official game. So if that sounds interesting to you, uh, feel free to come check us out. Once again, discord.gg slash Tamari. 
But you could also just come ask questions about anything there, and um, there will be a lot of people who will be willing to help you out. But anyway, without uh, delaying too long here, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and uh, I'll see you in whatever video you decide to watch next. Take care.